thank you for having me here. Uh, as Maria said, uh, I will present this uh, preliminary result about the value-added tax gap in Tanzania. We are a research team uh, with Amina from UN Wider, Ezekiel and Oswald from the Tanzania Revenue Authority, Vincent from the University of Dar es Salaam, and me, as Maria already said. So a brief summary of our result up to now. Uh, we gather administrative tax data with outing data for a specific tax region to estimate the bad gap between the 2014 and the 2019. Up to now, we are doing this in three steps. First, we use the data okay, to provide preliminary evidence, evidence about the strategic behavior of firms. So basically, firms looks like they declare taxes to be in zones where are less auditing process. And the second step, we follow a bottom-up uh, approach uh, to estimate the bad gap. In our preferred estimation, we estimate the gap of 48% uh, for the audited tax region, and uh, we compute 53% uh, for the whole country. We also uh, see that this estimation is decreasing across time, being more or less stable between 2016 and 2019. And also, we show that this is a lower bone estimation. So if we can have better data about large firms, we expect that uh, those numbers will rise. And finally, using our prediction, we can see how is the behavior of firms or the evasion across the bad distribution and the sales distribution, showing that firms at the beginning of the bad distribution evade more. For the sales distribution, this happened for small and large sized firms. And also, we document that firms try to declare more bad purchases in order to pay less taxes. And this produces that are, they are mimicking smaller firm and this obviously could uh, distort uh, either the bad distribution or the sales distribution that we see. A bit of institutional background. The VAT is collected by the TRA, the Tanzania Revenue Authority. Tanzania is divided between tax region and some geographical region. So depending on uh, the, real, the geographical region, we can see that more than geographical region for one uh, tax region or vice versa. Regarding taxes, we have zero rated product, mostly export, exempted product, and the PIT in the mainland Tanzania is 18%. Also, regarding the VAT, uh, if firms have an annual gross sales larger than 40 million of Tanzanian chilling, they should be registered as VAT agents. In the case that they have turnover larger than 100 million of Tanzanian shilling, they should have a VAT ID. And uh, in this case, as in many other countries, the VAT is basically sales less purchases taxes. And also firms can ask for uh, coming forward some credit. Regarding audits, this is annual plan by each tax region. And what does this mean is basically could be some more general strategy, but we can interpret it that each region can decide specifically uh, what will they do. This is based on audit, the auditing process in the taxpayer to turnover trends and payment. So this is something like a risk assessment estimation. Regarding our data, we have audit data at a firm level between 2018 and 2022. This is where the audited were conducted. And the period that they audited goes between 2013 and 2021. Basically, we have, as I told you, where the audited start and where it end and the period covered. We have the different type of auditing and the amount recovered per type of taxes. This is important because we can see if some firms have zero VIT, but have positive 
uh, evasion in other taxes. And we can denominate these firms as bad compliers. Regarding the VAT declaration, we have administrative data. So basically we have all the bad form that firms monthly uh, fill to the uh, TRA. This is between the 2011 and the 2021. And we have the taxes and the untaxes declaration. So we can know, for example, how many of zero rated sales they are declaring. And also we have gross and some tax paid amount. So to be clear, we have how much of taxes product they sell and how much they pay for taxes for these products. Also, we have information from firms, basically the ID for those who uh, accomplish the VAT requirement. We also have the VAT ID. We see the tax region, the postal city, business activity, and the industry. So to show you a little bit more the data, you can see that the red bar of the bar are the audited tax region, the number of firms, so mostly or the majority of firms come from the audited tax region. The same happened with the total output and the total input. So basically, the audited tax region or the firms there represent a large part of the VAT, the output, etc. The rate of audited firms in the audited tax region is around 50%. We also document that audited and non-audited firms bunch around zero bad declaration, and the VAT recovered is significant if we consider that the average uh, percentage of firms audited is around the 50%. This is our first preliminary evidence. This is the VAT evasion. You can see in this part, in your right, across the bad group, and in your left, across the sales group. What we do with the bad group is basically divide the sample between negative, bunching at zero, and positive, one month before the auditing process, okay? So to not have any bias. You can see that this is the mean of VAT recovered from the auditing process with the confidence, confidence interval. And our main conclusion is those firms who are in the bunching at zero group evade more, but the dispersion looks like that we can find similar amount of evasion in all the other groups. So it's not so clear that those firms are who evade more. Regarding the sales group, we divide the sample by the total sales per year. So we have small size, the first 32%, small, the following 33, and large firms, the last 33. In this case, it is more obvious that small and large firms evade more uh, than the middle-sized group. This could be also because some firms are evading certain amount of taxes that they move to the small group. No? So what we see could be is that some evading firms increase this number. Um, also, we document that firms with positive and negative uh, VAT declaration and large size firms show more auditing process. So if we interpret this as a probability, those zones are more prone to receive an auditing process. And if we normalize the evasion by sales, we identify that firms that bench at zero VAT declaration and small size firms evade more. And for this reason, we said that looks like firms declare in a way strategically to avoid zones who show uh, more auditing process. Now, our empirical strategy, basically we estimate this equation for the audited firms. Since we have monthly data, we can uh, impute the average monthly evasion that is detected but auditing. So we have the monthly evasion, and we control for all the sales items in the VAT forms, all the uh, purchases input in the VAT form, 
the net profit, which is basically total output less total input. And we control for the bad distribution, sales distribution, date, tax region, activity, city, and industry. Again, this is only for uh, firms that we have in our data that face an auditing. Later, we use this coefficient to input evasion for those firms who didn't receive an auditing process and for firms who receive auditing process in period that they are not audited. Using that, we can estimate the VAT gap, which is basically the total amount of, of evasion over the total amount of taxes that they should pay, which is evasion plus the taxes that they already pay. Uh, we did this per year. And to estimate the country VAT gap, we assume that the VAT gap rate between audited tax region and the country is the same as the tax pay. Okay? And to avoid some problems because of the sign of some uh, audit declaration, particularly when they input credit, we use the absolute values of the tax. So this is our first result. This is our preferred estimation, where uh, we can see that we can estimate the VAT gap between 2014 and 2019. Okay, uh, the average VAT gap is 48.5 percent, and between 2016 and 2019, this become more stable and fall a little bit to uh, 44 percent. If we don't consider the large taxpayer department, which are the larger firms, because we don't have so many um, <coughs> auditing process there, this estimation increased about 20 percentage points. And because of that, we said that this is a lower bound estimation, and we are trying to get more data about auditing in this group to improve our results. This is regarding the country. Uh, we see that same patterns as before still hold, but now the average VAT gap increased to 53%. And finally, using this uh, evasion prediction, we can see uh, what happened with evasion across, again, the bad distribution and the sale distribution. To normalize this and give a better intuition about that, we normalize by the sales, and we can see that regarding the VAT distribution, evasion is monotonous decreasing with firms at the beginning of the VAT distribution evading more. So we can suppose that firms that bunch at zero and who have negative <coughs> VAT uh, declaration are those who are evading more. But more interesting, in the sales case, we see a U-shaped form, which means that small sized firms evade more, but also large. And this is interesting because something is happening in the large uh, firms that they are evading more. So our preliminary conclusion, in our preferred estimation, we document that the VIT gap is around 84% for the audited tax region and 53% uh, for the whole country. And this is a lower bound estimation. We also document that uh, firms declare more purchases about the VAT to increase evasion. And as I told you before, this produces smaller uh, VAT declaration and firms are mimicking small sizes firms. What are the policy implications of our result up to now? Uh, the first one is that to estimate the VAT gap, we need to consider not only the heterogeneity across the VAT declaration, also we need to see what happened across sales. Uh, something happened in large sizes firms that needs attention, and it is not so clear, not only the incentive, also uh, the amount. We can uh, expect that with better data, perhaps this part of evasion will rise a bit more. So this could be something similar to what is documented nowadays with personal income data with leaks. And uh, finally, we also document that firms are a strategic firm. So what is relevant is that they see auditing as random as possible through 
avoid that they declare strategically and be in some uh, uh, zones that face less auditing process. And finally, to share with uh, all of you what are our next step. First, we improve the estimation of evasion, basically machine learning and with other econometric method. Later, we want to study the determinant of evasion using some uh, difference in different strategy. And finally, uh, we want to go further in the revenue consequence of this. So thank you very much. <laughs>